Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special interview between Jürgen Club and Arsene Wenger. We'll start with the younger and with the guest, if you don't mind. Welcome to Qatar, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> Great to have you here. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Now a few days, it's the first sunny day, so I sit in an interview studio, I really love that fact. You know, because the weather was surprisingly um, good for football it the last couple of days. So let's start talking about <laughs> football. <laughs> His career is very similar to yours in, in Arsenal. Everyone knows that there is a massive pressure on managers working in Premier League, Champions League, a lot of games. How can you see his first few years in the Premier League and in the English football? I think uh, he has done very well, of course, because uh, he got uh, uh, everybody on board. I think a, a good manager is somebody who has a clear idea of what he wants after he has the capacity to get it from his players, you know, and I thought as well uh, he bought the right players for his style of play, that is as well an, an important target. But as well, what something that is very important and maybe you don't speak a lot about, he has aligned his team with the values that are important at Liverpool. That means uh, big solidarity in the team, uh, a good fight, fighting spirit and a very efficient game. Uh, you know, that uh, to be very efficient in what you do and have a consistency uh, for I I in the results. And that is something that uh, in Liverpool is a real football city. And I think the team is aligned with the values that are very important in the city. So speaking Thank about you. efficiency, <laughs> yeah. some people say the opposite, that you know how to utilize the players, but it's not easy to play under you as a manager because you need a lot of run, you need to be physically fit for every game to play for Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp. Yes, but it's not a problem. They are all healthy, young, good footballers, so um, not using your full potential I would, take, I would uh, see as a waste of, of talent, waste of um, time actually. Um, but it's not that intense. If you look at the stats, it looks much, maybe more intense um, than, it, than it is in the end. There are teams that run much more than us. Uh, we have high speed, we are pretty often sprinting around if you want. Um, yes, we, we, we try to be uh, dominant in, in both um, periods of the game. When we have the ball, we, we had to improve that in the last couple of years. Uh, when the other team has the ball, we were, um, the, the idea is clear. We want to be um, uncomfortable, all that stuff. Just it's a, it's a, I like I like how my team is playing. Not um, every minute, but most of the time, uh, because it's um, it can be quite spectacular. A lot of challenges, a lot of um, accelerations, a lot of speed ups, all these things, and a lot of technique, of, of course. And the, the way the, the boys improved in the last um, three four years is, um, is is impressive, to be honest. Because we always adapted to the different situation in the league. We had to become just better, what you usually do with, or with um, organizing uh, or the better organization. And then we had to, when we were better, we had to, to use our dominance in a better way, which uh, then we had to work on, on, on possession, which we did. I think we made big steps in that. And the boys adapted to the different level and brought, of course, really good players in. That was very important. You can do a lot in training, but not everything. So sometimes you have to buy the quality. Um, that's what we did. And so that's now our team and we all really like it. So you won the Premier League unbeaten. Do you see your own club doing the same with Liverpool? Uh, they were close last year, you know, and uh, they are still <laughs> on, on uh, course, yes, uh, to do it. But I think uh, what Liverpool is expecting at the moment is just to win the Premier League, you know, and uh, that is the first target uh, for such a, a football city. Uh, to stay uh, basically 30 years without winning the Premier League is n nobody would have uh, predicted that. So that is their main target, and uh, I think they are uh, on on good on a good run and a good course to achieve that this season. Because their main opponent, you would think, uh, is quite far already. But then winning in style is something better. Four or five years ago, we thought that winning titles is not easy with playing offensive football like what he's doing now. Well, but uh, you look at the number of goals they score and the number of goals they concede, <laughs> they are very, very good. They are good. I, I watched them last night, you know, and uh, even they had not all their top players, they play intelligent football. 
where players make intelligent decisions on the pitch and at the end of the day. But as well, uh, my experience when we played the whole season unbeaten is that they accumulated the belief that if they just continue to play, they will win the game. That is very difficult to get in the team because you need a special run to do that. And to get the fear to lose out of the team uh, is something that is very important. And they have that at the moment. And there's no coincidence that they win their games in the last, in the final minutes of the game. But they just focus on continuing to play. You just mentioned earlier buying the quality. We saw Alison Becker yesterday, who was the main <laughs> reason maybe of, of saving the team of at least two or three goals. Yeah. And then we saw Van Dijk when he came and now He's one of always uh, almost close to win the golden the, the Ballon d'Or. So for sure, when you sign these two players, we know that in the media some criticism of of the value of these players. But now the quality is paid back, winning the Champions League and doing the difference in a lot of the games. I'm not sure if there was a lot of criticism. Oh, I didn't hear it or listen I mean to the it. Value well. Yeah, of I know. The I know it was, was, it was, quite it was big. expensive, of yeah. course. Yeah, clear. But. Um, and I was saying, what is for to see exactly the same way? If you, if for the right player, you have to pay the money which is available. If you don't have it, we don't have to discuss. But it was an easy decision to ask the club, can we do it or not? And I said, yes, we can do it. So then you just have to be convinced. And with these both players, for example, it was clear. They had, that's a little bit of difference to, to the other players we, 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 we brought in the last couple of years. They had that level already. Even when, uh, for Ali was clear, but for Virgil, for example, he played at Southampton. Before that, he played at Celtic. So people maybe were not 100% sure how will he adapt, but all the individual skills he had already. He was that fast, he was, but he had to adapt a little bit to our way of play because we play with a higher last line than Southampton did, for example. I watched the Celtic games, to be honest, when he was there. Um, so, and adapting to that helped him as well. Then he can use his speed in the, in, the, in the long distance, for example. Other players, Mo came in, Mo Salah came in and was, um, was expensive well, but had still to make a few steps and did that. He plays a different role with us than he did, for example, at, at Rome, slightly different, but different. Sadio Mane was a brilliant player at Southampton, but had to make some steps, consistency especially. Gini Wijnaldum played for Newcastle, he was a really good player, versatile midfield player, but I think he made unbelievable steps to be a really um, strategic, player in a deeper role before that played a 10 and a week. Well, so they all have to, uh, I don't want to forget anybody, Robbo, they all had to make steps. Um, and Robertson came in and was offensively a sensational fullback, but nobody else wanted him because defending was not a good. Now, he, when you see him now, he, obviously you can learn defending. That's what we had to make the decision about. So these were all these things. Bring Joel Matip in for, on a free transfer. Nobody wanted him really. We, we, we saw him, I, mean, I know him for long, so that, that were really good decisions that we made and that, but that's what you need to make the next step in football because all the other teams don't sleep. Um, Man City brings in constantly players, Leicester now really um, is a really good team and made really smart decisions on the transfer market on top of what they already had um, and these are all the teams, that's all the teams we, we face and we have to, in Arsenal for example, you see in a moment offensively really still a really good side but that, uh, the defensive organization doesn't work out yet in the moment when they can sort that they have the next they do the next step so that's the league we are playing in and that's the teams we are facing so we have to we have to develop it's not that we wanted it for just for fun we have to to be as successful as possible and we will see where that will end so mentioning arsenal we know that arsene winger had almost a full authority in the club for almost 20 plus years 22 years we know that he has a fantastic business background, so he almost created this business model of the club. Do you have the same authority, do you have the same role of managing the whole business model of the club or just football? No, it's not just football, but it's, I'm, 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 no, we never spoke really about it. I don't know exactly how Arsene's, Wenger, Arsene's day was. <laughs> but it started now. pretty early and ended pretty late. He's uh, this kind of guy who is involved probably in everything. I, um, in, I'm educated in Germany where the job is, is different, obviously. I had this job, I would say, at Mainz. Um, came then to, to Dortmund and there we had a sporting director, a, a proper involved CEO with Akivatske, stuff like this. Um, so it was three people who decided pretty much everything. Um, and then coming to Liverpool, Mike Gordon, Michael Edwards and me, so we is again like three people in the football business. But um, I'm often, I'm lo I work long and, and I like it, but my main focus is of course the football and the, the, around the things. Um, I'm involved in everything, but not 
don't make always the final decision. So, but it's just it's a, it's a different job in England to, to Germany. That's true. But I have been, I'm for sure I'm, I'm influenced from the German way. That's how it is. I was there for 15, 16 years. That's normal. What is the best business model? Well, uh, I believe that uh, the job has changed as well in England. Today, you have very few managers who make the transfer negotiations. Why? Because uh, in, in his position now, just uh, you have a team around the team. You have to manage uh, two teams basically now, because the number of scientists, the number of people around the team has increased a lot, and uh, so the media work has become uh, much bigger than uh, when I arrived uh, in England. So in the end, I thought I had not enough time during the day to do my job and I had uh, less time dedicated to football than I would love to, you know. And I felt all the other things were too big uh, to continue to have my full focus on uh, what is really important on the pitch because at the end of the day that is the most important and that's what we like the most. What makes him a special manager? <laughs> Sorry? What makes him a special manager? I'm still here. I, 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 <laughs> but just what I told you at the start when he started uh, uh, this uh, interview, he has a clear idea of what he wants to do and he can get from people what he wants them to do. This is a kind, he has a kind of charisma and uh, this is a bit like you give the same receipt to 10 different people, you have 10 different meals. You give the same training to 10 different people, you have 10 different training sessions. So everybody has his way and uh, why are some get what they want and some less, uh, it's a mystery. Still we don't really know today. But he has been successful in Germany, he has been successful now in England. So that means uh, he must have some qualities. You're enjoying having fun, smiling all the time. All the time maybe. With the massive <laughs> club like Liverpool, with the pressure Liverpool usually have every year. How can you balance? I knew about the pressure before I signed the contract, to be honest, the first one, and, um, and it, I accepted it in that moment, and so I, since then I didn't think about it anymore. That's the truth. So um, the easy decision for me was um, I made years ago that was I give my 100%, I cannot give more. If that's not enough, I cannot change that. So why should I now put pressure from outside on my shoulders? I have no time and no, no energy for that, actually. So the facts are there. Yes, Liverpool was not champion for 30 years. Um, that's long, but with 27 of these years, I have absolutely nothing to do with it. It was just it's, it's other people, sensational good people, tried to do it and didn't make it. So that we have just to start new for us. That's what we did. In the first year, we didn't try to become champion. We just tried to improve. In the second year, we had no chance to think about being champion. We just had to improve and qualify for Champions League. The last year and this year is pretty much the first year where we are in contention for that. So is there now pressure? No. How, how that would be silly if uh, there would be pressure on us. Maybe people want to put pressure on other people feel pressure but we don't because this generation of players tries it if you want a second time and it's all an okay number <laughs> trying two experience. times and maybe that it works out a second time or not and then the third time we will try again it's not that with the 27 of the 30 years yes this club this wonderful club it's part of the history but as as much as we have nothing to do with the 40 years before where we, they were dominant like crazy that was not our time as well. So we use the good things, the, the power of this club, which is incredible. It's um, wherever we go, our supporters are already there. And when we are at home, it's just really special. European nights are special. For, I cannot explain it why, but it's unbelievable. And um, using all these things, um, using the financial power we have, we are not, we have not the most money in the league, but we have enough to, to make smart decisions. That's what we try. So that's the situation. We really don't think about the pressure. We just think, see this club and the, the, con the, the, the consolation we are in as an opportunity. That's why I signed another for another few years, uh, because I just want to say I want to be part of this development still. And if there are difficult moments in the future, I want to be there to help sorting them. Because if then a new one is there and if maybe you have to change a few things in the team and the new manager sits and, and explains to people and they say, no, 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 the club would have done it differently, that makes no sense. So the club became really important to me really quickly and um, so that's why I feel responsible and that's why we try to, to make really the best, the most success of it now and then we will see what we can make that the future is bright as well. So you moved uh, Arsenal, you were part of this project moving from Highbury to Emirates. Yes. Highbury was fantastic, classic, nice atmosphere, stadium. 
but Anfield is always a special stadium. It's the best stadium in, in England. It's simple because of uh, the people are so close to a pitch. People really uh, uh, love football in every family. You know, they are really football connoisseurs because we speak now about the period where Liverpool wins. I've been in positions where we were leading 5 1 uh, with five minutes to go and they were chanting, you'll never walk alone, you know, it's one of a few cities, maybe the only city in the world where you, f you find that. So I, uh, I moved from Highbury, it was a bit similar to Anfield, even, uh, uh, even not the same noise there, but there was a soul in the stadium and uh, we built a new stadium, but it never found, we, we left our soul at Highbury because we could never recreate exactly for security reasons, was the distance from the pitch to the stand had to be bigger, because you need ambulances to come in. The inclination of the stands had to be smaller, you know. All that kind of things that make, uh, we didn't find exactly the same atmosphere. So you were able to build a fantastic relation and love with the people of Liverpool City and for sure Liverpool fans. So quickly, how it happened? I have no idea. That's it. You cannot really do that uh, on purpose, what I didn't do. Um, we have no, in our job, we have no contact with people, to be 100% honest. My day is I, in the morning I drive to the training ground, there I am, and I drive home. So if you don't go to a game, the next day is exactly the same. And there's one day in the week or two or three days in the week where I drive to the stadium. That's my life, that I connect with Liverpool people. I, can, I have a few neighbours, obviously, or people in the, in the village where I live. Maybe it's a town, um, um, but that, that, that's all. It's just, it's just uh, the way I... Um, I, I see football fits really well to the to the way the Liverpool fans want to see football. That's that's right. It's a lot about passion. I cannot, I I cannot change my personality. I develop hopefully and developed in the past hopefully, but um, I'm very passionate about football. That makes caused me a few problems in my life, but um, gave me another um, brought a couple of my teams on a different energy level as well. So that's it, and that fits really well with the, with the Anfield and, and Liverpool atmosphere. So that's of course I how I said I feel really I felt again I was surprised about that, but I felt really quickly responsible and committed all that stuff again when I when I arrived at Liverpool. Liverpool is a different club, a difficult club for managers. Nobody re uh, reached really what the people wanted, so you cannot make long-term plans at Liverpool. Uh, it could have been really easily possible that you that you get a sack after two years when you try, but don't achieve it, and the next one has to try it. Um, but yeah, we found together pretty quickly and um, I, I, I had that guess before I signed and the hope as well and um, now it's nearly it's nearly perfect but of course it's always good when you win games but it was good already in the first season it was good in the second season when we didn't win anything and lost big finals um, the connection with the club was really was really big and um, so long may it continue it's not easy to adapt in the Premier League already five managers are sacked when we are not yet even in the middle of the season Look, uh, we speak just about, uh, he just spoke about the fans uh, loving you. It's linked with what we st uh, talked about at the start. But what has changed in the last 20 years in England? The owners, the coaches, the players, what has remained stable is the love of the fans for their club. And uh, that is uh, something special at Liverpool, you know, and uh, special in England because uh, that intensity of love for, for their club, especially that has not changed. And that makes you as well for managers to love their club because they feel I'm in a special place here because what I do has a meaning to people. And you can give them happiness, uh, uh, of course, based on uh, what they expect from you, but you have to win the games. And he won the Champions League for the club. <laughs> he won the Champions League for Liverpool. Yeah. Of course, that's, wh that's why we love him as well, don't worry. And, uh, but I think he had the love even before winning any title in Liverpool. Yes, but uh, because uh, people feel, they get uh, the vibes coming out of the way you play football. You cannot cheat people. They feel if you're on the right track or not. They feel when you're wrong. You cannot cheat people. These are people who go from like that tall until they are 80 years old related to the club to the stadium and their life is guided by the results of a club you walk through the city when the team has lost its funeral you know 
See, it is like that, and uh, that passion is exceptional, you know. And when you're a manager, you know when you lose a game that you make thousands of families sad, you know. And that uh, you have to care. That is a real pressure. What he talks about is that you don't make people happy. But in a big city like a uh, big f uh, in England, it is like that. And uh, but the fans as well, they have a feeling towards their managers. So one of the special things about you is you knew how to manage this group of talented players, even the people on the bench, Shakiri, um, Origi, they are always happy and when they come, even for <laughs> 10 minutes, they give <laughs> maximum. And then also you knew how to control the problems. We remember Saku, you were able to solve the problem in a few days. How can you control the dressing room and make everyone happy? Oh, they are not. <laughs> They are not always Such in each fight. second happy, um, but I think they are hopefully always. We have to ask them, but they hopefully always feel really part of the, of the of the team really because it's everybody knows that. Look, that's common sense. You cannot go in a season with eleven players. Everybody knows that. That preseason is always wonderful. Everybody thinks I'm part of these first eleven, and then after a couple of weeks, you realize. And it's and again the problem is in England, not only England, but. The intense period of the season starts in November. Until then, you have a normal, for us, normal week. So you don't need to rotate constantly, stuff like this, or make big changes in the team, especially when, it's, when you're on a good run. It's most all the seasons the same. Then the first one or two, two, three players. It's not that we don't talk and they don't come and ask me why I'm not in the team. We have these conversations, of course. But, um, but you keep it away from media always. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you look. A lot, uh, yeah, some rules we have. If you, if you have to be, um, you have to show respect to the team. In the moment when you show me, you think you are more important than the team, you have anyway a problem. Can I sort it in the short term? I'm not sure, but I can short, sort it in the long term. So then you're not part of the team anymore because that makes no sense. I want you self-confident. I want you self-aware that you really feel, I'm, that's for a football really important that you express yourself on the pitch. And sometimes you have to be selfish, no problem. Especially strikers, go for it, try to score. Um, that's completely fine. But in a moment when you misunderstand the situation that you are more important than the team, then you, have, that's, you still can help the team now, but in the long term the team will have more problems because of that. So these are kind of things everybody knows who, who in our team, everybody knows when, when he works together with me. We have a lot of talks before we work together and all that stuff, so that's all clear. You have to be um, self-confident, but in the moment when that gets too much, then you have a problem. As long as you are not Cristiano or, or Messi, <laughs> you have to be a football player. As long as you are not Cristiano or Messi, you have to defend. That's how it is. So are you Cristiano or Messi? No, then defend. So they're easy rules. and. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's part of it. But they are not always happy, just we have, I have smart players, thank God, and they don't use, because they know it makes no sense, but they don't use public to put pressure on me. So like, that they tell them, the agent, tell them why I don't play. Yeah. And then as we sit together in the dressing room and ask him, why, why did that happen? You can ask me, you don't have to choose that way. So far we could handle that somehow, most of the time. And if not, we thought that then at least internally and I don't fire back in public <laughs> and say, so now we make a proper public discussion of it. But it's not always easy, that's how it is. But um, the smarter the boys are, the easier it is. So open doors, it's, this is a leadership. Look, it's part, uh, it's basically part uh, based on uh, management of people. And that is basically based on communication and honesty. Uh, as he says, you cannot keep uh, the, 11 people who start are happy, the others are less happy, and sometimes not happy at all. But they have to think that you're honest, yeah. you know, that you make your decision by thinking this is the best 11. So you have to communicate this? You have to gain that, that the they season? feel, I'm uh, not agree with this decision, but I know that's what he really thinks. So that, that, that is uh, absolutely they right. Have, they have to know what they have, can expect from you. So that's important. If you tell something, you have to do it. If you say somebody, oh, you don't play today, but you play next week, whatever for whatever reason, he has to play. If he then if exactly. he doesn't don't play, that's if he's not playing, then then you have a problem. Because that not only with the player, then all the others. You, you, it's not in our job. You have to lead a group, and you have to be strict, very strict in moments because of, but yeah, young boys, um, they are not always that straight. Um, you have to be strict, but on the other side, it's not allowed to lose the dressing room. 
So that's the, that's the balance you have to find. It's, it's, it's like a father with, with his kids. You cannot do exactly what they want because you have to tell them left or right. But at the end, you always want to have a good relationship with them so for the rest of your life. And that's how it is with the football team as well. So it's not that complicated, but it's not always easy. Mr. Arsen, Mr. Jorgen, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you together. Thank you very much. Good luck for your, the rest of your career. Oh, well, hopefully we see you more than 22 years in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.